Welcome to Fight News Now. It's John Pollock with you, and what a packed show as always with lots of news to get to with John Ramdean and Robin Black. Today we're going to chat UFC uniform violations. It's high school all over again. Dustin Poirier is recovering from surgery. We have a fighter retirement announcement, and UFC President Dana White speaks on the next move for Holly Holm. UFC President Dana White spoke on UFC Tonight and stated that UFC women's bantamweight champion Holly Holm will in fact fight before a potential rematch with Ronda Rousey. Most believe the UFC was targeting a rematch between the two for UFC 200. Though the status of Rousey is unknown, Holm was adamant about fighting as soon as possible. Holm also appeared on the MMA Hour this past week with Ariel Hawani and strongly hinted that a fight with Misha Tate is coming up. Martin Kampman, who debuted with the UFC back in 2006 and last fought in 2013, has officially announced his retirement from the sport at the age of 33. Kampman announced the news on UFC.com, stating that he is moving home to Denmark and wants to be with his family. Kampman had a number of big fights with the promotion, including a war with Diego Sanchez in March of 2011 and earning a split decision victory over Carlos Condit back in 2009. He lost his last two fights to Johnny Hendricks and a rematch with Condit in August of 2013. Ben Askren has confirmed to MMAFighting.com that he is moving up to fight at 185 pounds for one championship following the promotion's new weight cutting initiative to get fighters to a point where they are fighting closer to their natural walk around weight. Askren is the one championship welterweight champion but says he expects to be fighting the same guys in the division because everyone should be moving up due to the new policy. One championship is allowing fighters to get 6% above their weight division eight weeks out from a fight and then taper that percentage down as the fight draws closer with fighters expected to report their weight daily during camp. UFC lightweight Dustin Poirier is recovering from surgery for his broken nose, which he suffered during the fight with Joseph Duffy this past Saturday at UFC 195. Poirier is expected to be out for six weeks while his nose heals. Poirier won a unanimous decision over Duffy and was his third consecutive win since returning to the UFC's 155-pound weight class last year. And MMAJunkie.com reported on Thursday that three fighters who fought at last month's Fox card in Orlando will be receiving a reduced payment for violating the UFC's athlete outfitting policy for uniform violations, with another 12 fighters receiving warning letters for infractions since the policy began back in July, although none of the fighters were identified. Coming up next Sunday night, circle it. 7 p.m. Eastern time, it's a full one-hour preview show as John Ramdean, Robin Black, and myself will be getting you set for the UFC Fight Night card from Boston featuring TJ Dillashaw and Dominic Cruz with the prelims airing live here on Fight Network at 8 p.m. Eastern. Here with John Ramdean and Robin Black, and I'm just making sure everyone is dressed appropriately and we're not going to fine anybody. <laughs> oh, I hate no. this policy, guys. I think it's just... This feels ridiculous. I understand the UFC made a lot of money off of this deal, but the fact that these fighters are now getting fined for this stuff, I just, I hate it. I just hate it. We had our year-end show uh, not that long ago. We were talking about the busts of the year. I think we forgot to mention the Reebok oh, yeah. deal being probably the biggest bust, you know, from all the mistakes that were made on the shirt, the fact that the fans don't really dig the designs, the fighters don't necessarily love this deal. I think uh, the only person, it's, uh, the only people that it's not a bust for, I think, is Here's the my biggest problem with it. It was, when this was rolled out, it was the idea, listen, we don't want all these, these weird brands on shorts, and this is our canvas, and we want it to look pristine with just this dominant thing. Yeah, that applies to the fighters, but has the UFC stopped from having th their own sponsorships around the cage and all that? That's okay. And I just feel the fighters are, I don't know who the, these fighters are that are getting fined, but I guarantee you most of them are not millionaires. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So any time that we're dipping in and fining them, yeah. just these, I just, I hate the whole idea of it. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, what's my gig at this desk? I'm supposed to like try our, our job sometimes just to have fun and do whatever we want to talk about. Now I'm like, let's look for a silver a lining or let's look for a positive or let's look for a, for a and I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, there's got to be a devil's, no, no, I can't think of nothing. nothing. No, I mean, it's like not. Like I get, they violated yeah. the policy, so they're, they're well yeah, within sure. their rights to find them. I mean, I, 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 I just be disagree with yeah, it yeah, that's fundamentally. Right. It be in place. The argument that somebody who is looking for a devil's advocate will be like, well, in the NFL, you just can't come out and wear long johns. Okay. I, I mean, sure, but it, I mean, in the NFL, they don't make $8,000. Who's the lowest paid guy on an NFL yeah. roster, and who's the yeah. lowest paid guy I'll on a I'll tell you, they make, 
they make more than 8,000 a game. 100%. <laughs> you know? Let, let's move on. Are you guys surprised at all this, this move that Holly Holm, it looks like, who knows what Ronda Rousey is, what her status is. Maybe she doesn't even want to fight. No, she's going to fight. She's going on Saturday Night Live. She's going out to the world. So I think she's ready to, to deal with whatever she needs to deal with. But, I mean, that's apparently she's got a whole bunch of obligations. Uh, and I know Holly Holm wants to stay busy. This makes the most sense. You're trying to make as much money as humanly possible. The job is to become a champion. She's the champion. Now try to defend it and make as much cash as Is the as argument that possible. if it's to make the most money, yeah. do you not just wait? No. Because I would fight say fight. four championship defenses equal one Ronda Rousey rematch. True, true. But uh, Ronda may not be back. And would you blame her? I mean, would you really blame her after you got kicked in the head like that? And, and now it's gone from, I can waste any of these people to an uphill battle against somebody who it looks like and it feels like is the next generation of, of UFC fighter. The one thing that you're not all that good at, maybe you had some coaching, make you feel like you were good at it, turned out you weren't good at it. Are you gonna take, climb that mountain when you're making all this money and you have all this celebrity? George may not fight again. You look at it, George, you're rich, you're successful, you did it. Why do you need to fight? Same thing for her. No, she can't do that. She can't because Misha Tate's still in there. Uh, Katzengano is still there. They're all still, after losing to Ronda Rousey, they dusted themselves off and they got back in the horse. Gina and the Carano, though. Gina Carano's the prototype. She was the prototype star. Go in there, show what, what beauty fighting is sure. and that there are women who can do incredible things fighting. Use that to become a star and go on and live your life without head trauma. That's what Gina did. And Ronda can do it too if she likes. That right. actually does segue well over to Martin Campman, who is a guy that he was, he was worried about those very things in, in regards to head trauma. We haven't seen him fight now in, in two and a half years, officially announcing his retirement. I don't think that comes as a surprise. I, think, but, I thought we, he already did yeah. announce well, it. Now but, it's official, yeah. official, official. So Martin Campman, though, is someone that maybe when, doesn't exactly roll off the top of people's head, but this was a guy Hardcore who had fans. some incredible fights in, mm. in the UFC and a very mm. long tenure as well. I always go back to that fight with Diego Sanchez in 2011. That was an unbelievable war between those, those two individuals. A three-round fight that was before the days of five-round main events across the board, but uh, that's one that comes to mind. And Condit. a rare mm -hmm. guy that mm -hmm. holds a victory over Carlos Condit. Yeah, Martin Campman was one of these guys that was good at everything during a time where it was a transition where we still saw you know wrestlers that were trying to get used to the stand-up game and so on and so forth uh, he had a striking background but had awesome submission game we saw his uh, wrestling constantly improve and uh, he was a, an extreme talent you look at those couple of losses that he had Carlos Conant and Johnny Hendricks were UFC champions it's unfortunate that you know he was in a division and facing some of the guys that were able to do the type of damage that they did but I mean He's definitely left his fingerprints and all he over the place. He beat Johnny Hendricks. Yeah. He probably would have, yeah. that would have got him that title fight. Yeah. I, I seem to recall him getting beat up by Alves and catching him in a guillotine yeah, late in the right. third. I mean, so every single one of his fights that comes to mind, he's covered yeah. in blood and has fought the real fight. Not fought the smart fight or not solved the riddle, gone in there and fist to fist mm -hmm. and chest to chest and knee to knee with another man. That's why we loved him. That's why we loved him. And you hope that, that, you know, and you make a good point. You're like, he doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, and that is true. Whether it's 10% or 15%, you hope it's 20 or 25%, but you hope that there are fans of fighting that have been fans for a fighting of a long time who appreciate a guy like Campman and that he's getting messages appreciating mm -hmm. the work that he did. And not only that, I mean, it's the type of thing where there's a conversation. Who are the best fighters? Who are the most exciting fighters? And there'll be Donald Cerrone, and there'll be Fedor, and but as soon as somebody says Martin Campman, it's like, oh yeah, Martin Campman, that guy's in crazy fights all the time, always brought it, was always in shape and always looked for the finish. So that's, uh, that's I think, what hardcore fans and casual fans, uh, that's what they look for in, in professional mixed martial artists. Wait, when you guys speak to fighters, it seems that, you know, Martin Campman is just the latest guy. Brian Stan, I put in this as well. A lot of guys that are very much more educated when it comes to head trauma and not just looking at the next fight. They have a better long-term vision. Guys that are, uh, Robbie Lawler who took years off of sparring and guys that are now sparring a lot less. I think there's much more of a big picture outlook for, for a lot of fighters, not everybody, but there are, I think that's growing. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I expect it to because of all the new information that's coming out there. Everybody is aware of head trauma and what will happen after your career is over. And I know fighters are taking that very, very seriously. But as you mentioned, not everybody has that philosophy because certain fighters, they don't have the luxury of being skilled in all these areas. And one of the ways that people tune into them because they get into these type of wars where they come out and there's hematoma or there's blood and so on and so forth. But that's what pays their bills. You know, uh, the NFL took that merchants of doubt approach. They yeah. went and it was yeah. like head trauma. What head trauma? Well, there's a little bit of head trauma. It wasn't caused by football. Well, you know, that does, like, and just denied and, re you know, misdirected and found doctors who lied and all that kind of terrible Smoking stuff. cancer. Smoking what? cancer. Uh, and uh, instead, uh, fighting seems to have, maybe it's because we came along later, it seems to have embraced the idea that if we educate all of these people, that it, in, it will be better for the long-term health of the athletes and the sport. Now you understand how to train, pro train more properly, how to fight safer, how to assess these guys and if you keep being public about it if you keep being open about it all those things will get better all right great stuff guys that's going to wrap it up for us but stay tuned for more of fight news now